Everybody needs a place to put their keys. And I actually lose mine about once a week. God is my witness, I had to break into the shop just to do this project because I misplaced them once again. Anyway, this is made out of zebra wood, which is a dramatic looking wood. The grain is awesome. Uh, the base here is two inches thick and six inches around. And then we just make a spindle with a tenon on it and we put a little hook in there. Now, we are working with some, like I said, zebra wood, which is really, really cool wood. This is kiln dried wood that I got from our friends over at Cook Woods. And it's a hard wood and the grain is the most spectacular part of it. Now I want to cut a six inch disc out of here and when they send us stuff, it has, watch this, it has wax on it. Now this is already dried, but they put the wax on there so when shipping, it won't absorb extra moisture and possibly crack the wood. So this wood isn't gonna crack when I cut it, but you try to write on here with a pencil, it's almost impossible. So I have my calipers here set at three inches, my pointy ones, these are the ones with sharp edges on it. And what I'm going to do is use the wax to my advantage. Let's see if I can do this here. It's slippery too. I want to find my edges like so and just push in real hard here. And now I'm going to scrape the wax. And now I can see where I'm going to have to cut this out on the bandsaw. And then one more step is we're going to make this part right here. So we're using up all this wood, which is great. And this is gonna be about inch and a half wide here. This is two inches thick, by the way. So we're gonna probably turn this down to about an inch. So waste a little bit of wood, but not much. So I'm gonna grab an awl now and use the awl to make my straight cut line. So now we're off to the bandsaw. On our bandsaw, we have the throat set. So this just fits underneath. We don't want a lot of extra blade exposed. And we're gonna start with the straight cut first. So we'll turn this on. I'm follow my little line there. My hands are out to the side so they're not going towards the blade. We go through slowly here. There we go. Now, I can't make this curve exactly because my blade's a little wide for that. So we're gonna come in and take it a little bit at a time. So I'll go wide right here. I'll come back and I'll snip that off. This doesn't have to be perfectly round right now because that's why we have a lathe. <laughs> Get this started. You can see a couple sparks flying there. It's because I'm trying to turn too sharply and the bushings in there are keeping me from twisting the blade. It's a good safety feature. There we go. <laughs> it's not beautiful, but it's kind of round. Um, the way we're going to hold this on the lathe is using a worm screw that we're going to put in our chuck. Now, that's kind of long, and if we were to drill a hole in this, we wouldn't be able to make the dish, right? And you do have holes on the bottom. I'll show you later how to fix that. So what we're going to use is a spacer. This is just a piece of MDF board that's a half inch thick. And you spin that on there. It happens very quickly. And so now we just have to drill a hole a little bit deeper than that. And so we take our calipers. And calipers have one thing on it that if you don't pay attention to, it has this little stem on this end. See that moving out? That's a depth gauge. So I can set this up here and lower it. See it's touching right now and I'm gonna bring it up. Well, I'm just gonna have it right there because I know exactly how deep the hole should be now. Now so to do that, we're gonna go to the drill press and set things up. That should work. I've spent a couple minutes getting the depth of my drill bit set here. This is a piece of scrap wood that I had left over when I was cutting on the bandsaw, so this is the exact depth of the blank I have. That's how deep the uh, screw has to go, and so I went a little bit proud of that so I make sure the screw doesn't bottom out. That's very important. You don't want that screw to hit inside of the wood or you won't have a good hold. So I have done a couple things to this. I marked the very first center point I had that my compass left with an awl to make it a little bit bigger so I could find it. I flipped it, took my compass and kind of found center again, and then made a mark three quarters of an inch out to the side. We're gonna drill a hole there. But we're gonna drill this hole first. And this is gonna be the first worm screw. This is gonna be the, uh, actually the top of the base. So we've got that drilled. Now, on the piece I have over here, let me show you. 
We've just drilled the hole at Gulfs here to hold this side. And that's an extra one, ignore that one. But we're gonna drill this hole next. But you can see I made a lip here so it goes down about eighth of an inch. So I need to adjust the drill press to go just a little bit deeper so it'll work in that hole. Okay, I've got that adjusted the way I want it. One design note here. See, I took my dot straight out from here and I have the grain running this way. Don't just put it willy-nilly. This will make it very dramatic if you select it here or here. You'll have the grain running perpendicular or parallel to wherever you're gonna set things up. Really pretty that way. So we'll get this started. There we go. Onto the lathe. We've got our chuck with our spacer and our worm screw on here. We're gonna take the center hole and put it in, and that is the top of the base. <laughs> and I'm spinning my headstock, and you can see that's screwing in good. One trick to do is when it gets really tight is lock your headstock in and then use both hands to turn it even tighter. Now that is a fantastic hold, but just to be safe, we're gonna bring our tailstock up with a live center in it and just give ourselves a little more support. It doesn't hurt to be careful. Okay, so that's in there right now. I've got my tool rest at center height. Rotate this by hand, because one, you'll find out you have the headstock lock still. <laughs> and two, this is not a perfect circle, like I said, so I wanna make sure nothing's hitting. Okay, this is in the orientation of a bowl, so we do wanna use a bowl gouge, and we're gonna clean the face up right now. I'm gonna start the lathe at slow speed, and bring it up. And it's really nice and round, so I can get the speed up pretty high because speed is your friend when you're trying to do some of these cuts. So I'm gonna bring the tool in. I've got the bevel of the tool facing the direction I wanna go. And make sure you have a really sharp tool. If you start making this cut and nothing happens, go sharpen. It's not because you're presenting the tool wrong, it's because the tool is dull and it won't make the cut. And like I said, zebra wood is a very hard wood. But you can see this is just moving through here like butter. I'm gonna come back, do the cut again. I've got my index finger up against the tool rest. My thumb is pinching down. It acts as a depth stop. And I'm making a kind of a modern looking piece here. Got a little vibration there, so that means we're still not flat or round. So I'll come back here. And so I want to just keep this simple. I want to have a nice clean line. I, I like letting really interesting wood show off because it's so pretty. Why waste that wood by putting a bunch of designs on there that don't need, need to be on, be on there when nature's already done it better than you could? One thing to keep in mind too is with this being film dried wood, it gets hot. <laughs> the shavings coming off can be pretty warm. Oh, that's my, really nice. Let me stop this real quick and just see how smooth it is. Because you don't want any torn grain because it won't sand out if you have any torn grain. That looks really good. Now these edges right here are sharp, so I just want to take the bowl gouge, I'm gonna put it on its side, like so, we're just gonna touch that edge and just gently go back and forth and I'm just chamfering the edge. And it just breaks that line and makes it look a little more elegant, a little more gentle. But it still keeps that nice design that I like, which is modern. Now we're gonna work on the end and start hollowing uh, out the base. Then we can get to the fun stuff, which is gonna be off-center turning. Now I've got my tool rest repositioned and I'm using a carbide tip scraper and it has to be perfectly flat. So I've got this on center so it holds out straight like so. Then we're gonna turn the lathe on. Now since this is a flat uh, carbide tip, we wanna kinda of come out to the edge before we make any cuts on the center because you don't wanna present the entire edge to the wood. So now I'm just kinda of bringing it across and all I'm doing is kinda of taking off that wax layer because that's gonna get in the way of our sanding here in a minute if we have it on the edge or outer edge. Okay, now one trick, I've been playing with these for a few years, is you can't plunge it in to start making your recess. We're gonna make that recess that is gonna be on the bottom, we're gonna put the green felt on. So take it to the side and make a push like so. So you're kinda of going in like that. Now you can come back here and clear out the center without engaging the entire blade of the tool. And so now that I have that, I'm just going to walk my way across and make this little recess. And anytime you hear the wood kind of chatter or vibrate, it's because like that, I put the entire tip of the tool in contact with the wood. And as long as you have a light touch, it's no big deal. The other thing you really have to watch out for is make sure, let me clear this off, you have the tool flat. You do not have it on its edge or it will get a catch. 
but these are wonderful tools for making flat bottoms. Before you'd have to make your own scraper to do that and you'd have to sharpen it about every oh three or four cuts. So carbide tip really helps you out a lot in this process. There we go. Now all I'm going to do right now is just sand the bottom and the side and we're going to reverse it and have some fun doing some off-center turning. Now we're going to have some fun. We're going to do off-center turning. That's why we drilled the hole off-center of the center. I guess that's where they got the name, huh? So I'll put this on here and, oops, undo my headstock, screw this in. Right now it looks normal. Just give it a second. <laughs> this is gonna look a little weird here. Okay, now we'll lock that in and do another good turn to make sure, it's, oops, wrong way, it's on tight. We cannot bring up our tailstock now because things are gonna be going a little weird here. But watch this rotate now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part of off-center turning. So what we want to do is actually cut a dish in here that's off the center. And the way we're going to get ready for that, I'm going to turn the lathe way down, turn this on. I'm going to take a Sharpie and just work my way out with little circles here. And remember we got that wax on there. So this is the only way I found that I can make marks and see them on the wax. So actually, this mark right here is really good. That's about the lip I want to leave for my change area. So I'm going to start dishing this out. So I'm going to bring the tool rest up a little closer. I have my swept back bowl gouge. It's got that fingernail grind on it. I'm going to turn this on. Now it's going to wobble. So we're going to pick the speed up and you can feel the wobble in the floor. And there's a wobble right there. If I go a little bit past it, the wobble goes away. So you can find a sweet spot to do this. The best, the high speed you can get safely is the good speed. So I'm going to bring this in and we're going to start making our cut just into the center like so. We're just going to make a nice gentle dish. Now, remember we have on the other end of this a hole drilled that's holding this with a worm screw. So we don't want to go so deep that we go into that hole. That would not be pretty. It would make a nice little weird funnel at that point, I guess. You can also see I have to take the tool away from my body because I've got the lathe in the way, the bed of the lathe in the way. So you just kind of have to hold your form as you swing through. You don't rush the cut, you take your time. And you heard that little bit of chatter and squeals because I'm using a small bowl gouge. I'm going to turn this off. It is hanging over a bit more now, so I'm going to bring it in even closer and that will reduce the vibration. I also, just for a uh, visual, I took the depth of the hole I had on the other side, so I know I can put this up to here. I don't want to go, I want to go about that deep. Does that make sense? So I don't want to go any deeper than this side of my finger. <laughs> like I said, you'll have a funnel if you do that. So we're going to turn this back on. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Bring the speed up. Now if you'll notice, there are some dark lines inside the hole here. Well, those are coming from the heel of the uh, tool. The heel is this point right here. This is the bevel, the shiny part. The heel is that point. If you look at that curve, I'm going to do my side here very carefully. The curve is steeper than the uh, shape of the bevel. So in other words, as, I, as this is riding, it's touching the tip and it's touching the heel and the heel makes the dark marks and that's what you call burnishing. Well, I have a trick for that and it's been around a long time. I didn't invent it. Here is another swept back bowl gouge and you can see that this one has a more extreme angle. It's more up and down. It's about 80 degrees plus you see right there, the heel is ground off. So when I take this tool now, with that little bit of presence of heel, I can make a nice clean cut here and it won't leave any of those burnish marks. So you wind up with a perfectly smooth, perfectly flat surface in here and it's very easy to sand. You haven't damaged the wood at all.
Now I'm eyeing this in. I want to put a hole dead center in this lip and that's where the stem goes, the spindle goes there. So that's just about right, right there. And you can see I sanded this on the lathe because this is centered. You can't sand this part on the lathe because you'll knock your knuckles off. We're gonna take care of that in a second. But we've got our 3 8 inch drill bit still in the drill. And we're gonna turn this on. And we're just gonna drill a hole about, I don't know, half inch max. Yeah. But the whole idea of centering this is you wanna make sure everything stays in line with the grain and it all looks good. That looks nice. Now we're just gonna take this over to our sanding disc and clean off the wax and clean up the face. We've got my disc going. And make sure when you're doing this, that you apply even pressure all the way around or you'll get rid of this side really fast and then you'll have a slope and that won't work. So I'm gonna rotate it by hand so I make sure that I keep that even. But anyway, I'm starting with 80 grit and I'm gonna work my way through 220. And that's already starting to look good. Well, now we're ready to do the spindle. And I really like the shape I came up with, but it's really hard to duplicate these shapes sometimes. Uh, I put my piece of wood on here and I rounded it out to about an inch and a quarter or so. And so I'm just gonna eye this up. On this end, we're gonna have our tenon. And so there's a nice little shape there. There's our design for that bead. And we have this here. And up here's another shape, another shape. And that's about the top right there. I probably won't stick exactly to this. I kind of go off the map sometimes, but this is not exactly what you call a classic design, uh, but I just like to throw things together when I'm turning, and this is what hit me when I did it, so I like it. Anyway, we're gonna start off with our swept back spindle gouge, and we're gonna start on the end there. So we can start removing a little bit of wood just to get out of the way. And so I'm just, whoops, swinging my body and catching the tip. If you do that, it'll run across on you. You catch a tip like that, see it run? So I lost my mark, but we have an idea where it is, right? Okay. So right about there, I'm gonna get my parting tool. I've hidden it around here somewhere. It was in my hand and it's, ah, there it is. <laughs> gonna take my parting tool and we're gonna make the bottom of the first shape. Now, you always work from tailstock to headstock when you're doing spindle turning because it gets more and more vibration but I don't want to take too much of the wood down right here because I need the thickness. You can also see I brought in a cone center and it's not pushing very hard, but I need the cone center because my tenon is actually gonna be really narrow. And if I had a regular tailstock up there, I wouldn't be able to get the calipers in there and make the shape I need. So anyway, the first bit we have is this little flat spot right here, and I'm just gonna do it like so. And then it makes a angle like so going in there. This is a bead here, so I'm just going to start gently rolling the tool. And it's a small movement I'm doing right here because I'm not making a big bead. But remind, remember, there is going to be a bead here, so I do need to bring it down a bit. Ooh, that's a nice noise. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm going to come in here and sweep that out again. This shape, I finally remembered where I saw this shape before because I, I, I look on the internet and I get inspired by a lot of things. This is actually the shape of some wood toys I had when I was a kid. <laughs> it's a little building block set. Anyway, so I've made that curve there. Now I want to bring this angle in here and make a nice meeting point. So that comes in, it's nice and crisp there. And then we're gonna come here and I'm gonna just gently make the roll like so. And that meets good there. So now I wanna move a little wood here and we're gonna start our bead. And we're going to get some of this out of the way. And the whole idea is to make this height of this side here. I'm going to do a pull cut here. You can do pull cuts too. So the tool's cutting like so. I want to make this height match this height over here because it's got to look like it's flowing through that bead. Now when you're making a little bitty bead, you don't have to do it all in one shot either. So around the top. Now I'm just going to take the tool and I'm just going to chop that edge off just a little bit. It's not a big move. But I do have to swing my body at the end to kind of make that last little curve. So I'm going to come here. This is uh, the next bead coming up, but it's thinner. You want to, when you make a shape here, continue tapering as you go towards the headstock. If it goes like this, it's more pleasing than something that goes like that. Anyway, I'm going to pick the speed up a bit here too because that will help me with my turning. Now I'm going to finish the top part of this. They're just going to match and then we're going to move on to those shapes on the other end, which involve coves and making a big bead. 
Now I've moved on a little bit and I'm kind of roughing out my shape so I want to get an idea where things are going to go. And right here is a cove I'm making and that's an easy shape to make. You just swing your body and you come from both sides like so. And I want to make it kind of nice and delicate, but I don't want to make it so thin that it falls apart either. Because <laughs> you're going to be hanging keys on here. And if you're like me, you have lots of keys. Anyway, so I've got my shape going there. Right here, I'm going to go into the ball, and I want to make this more of an angle. It's not going to be a, a flat lip. So you have to be very careful right here. You've got to really roll the tool on its side to make a sharp and clean transition right, let me show you, right here. If you do it wrong, you're going to chip the wood out. So that's not, I can feel there's no chip out there, so I'm good. Now right here is going to be the ball, and on the ball is going to be the hook. So before I turn this any further, I want to stop this. I'm going to grab my drill. Now remember I was talking grain orientation? Right there in the middle of this is where I want to have the hook so it'll look really nice and symmetrical when it's on the all put together. So I'm just drilling in a little way there. I have to pre-drill this hole because when you put the hook in, it'll split the wood if you don't pre-drill it. And that'd be a bad thing, kind of ruin the whole thing you just did. Anyway, so we're going to start this back up again. I'm going to really crank the speed here. Let's see if I can get this sucker done here. We're going to start making a bead. And we're just making half the bead so I don't really have to move my body that much. There we go. I'm going to come in at this angle here and make these two meet up. That looks good. A little serendipity. I made a curve on there instead of a flat spot and I like that. So the next bit is we're going to work our way into the top of this thing. And so I want to clear a little wood out here. Just like so. I'm going to make an angle that goes in like so. Come back here, remove wood from the side. You can't do it all at once from one side or you'll get a catch. And when you're trying to make a perfect ball, <laughs> you're never going to make it. So I always try to make mine a little oval or something. Just give myself an out. Okay, so there's our transition. That meets up nice. Now I'm going to move a little bit of wood out of here real quick. Like so. And this is just a clearing cut. And I made, um, you can see on the tip right here, I made little triangles. So that's just the shape of the tool fitting in there when I make those cuts like so. So that's pretty easy to do. And, I, and it's always nice to make shapes that are easy to do because you don't want to stress yourself out when you're turning. We're just supposed to have fun here. So anyway, we're going to go like this. And you can see I'm making my step and I'm making a clean cut there so I don't chip that edge. You can also see the tool now is making the shape of the underside right there. So when I come in here, I already have the underside made. I can come in and clean it up just a little bit. Very delicate touch like so. There we go. And you can see I'm taking a lot of care when I meet up right here. Because if I leave a mark there, I can't sand that out. So we'll come in there and just touch that again. It takes really good eyes to do this. And I really should have a lot more light on this. <laughs> that would help me out a lot. Plus magnifying glasses would be really good too. Now this is the last little bit of the top. Oops, come here. That's a design modification, not a mistake by the way. There we go, come in this way. Make this one like so. We're design modifying a little bit more here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and make this one a little smaller. Now, the next step really, would you think it'd be to part this off, but I still have to sand. But there's one more thing I have to do, and that is to turn the tenon that's going to hold this in the base. Now the hole we drilled in our base is 3 8 of an inch. So I've got my drill right here. I'm just going to take the diameter of the shank this way. It's a cheap way of getting the depth I need or the width I need. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the lathe on. On. It's the on button. you got to do that part. Take my parting tool, and you just take the calipers up here. And I'm going to come inside a little bit here. And so the caliper's right in that groove. And when I get the right diameter, diameter, they come through. Now I do have a cone center up here, right? So I want to be very careful that I don't um, push too hard with the cone because it will split the wood at this point. But like I said, I needed the cone so I can get the room to get in here and make this tenon. Now I'm going to keep the lathe running because I'm using a step center on the end. And I can take that off very quickly and come up here and see if that's going to fit. And see that's a little tight. It won't go in yet. So what I'm going to do, 
take this back, put it on the stab center, and just bring the tailstock back up and watch the teeth engage, and voila, it rolls again. That's kind of cool. So we'll come here and we'll just nibble off a little bit more. And I'm making the tenon a little bit long so I have something to play with right now because if I make it too narrow and it doesn't fit well, I got more wood to play with. So we'll try this now. And there we go, that's good. So I'm gonna take that diameter all the way up to the end here. And once I've done that, I'm gonna sand the spindle and part it off the lathe. And then we're ready for assemblage. That is a word, isn't it? <laughs> You can't learn from perfect, that's why you're watching me, right? Okay, anyway, we've got our hand rub polyurethane and we're putting on our first coat. And look at that zebra wood pop out. Isn't that a fantastic grain? That's why I wanted to do a simple, elegant design so it showed the wood off, not me. That's not important. I wanna show the wood off, that's the coolest thing. Once you put a couple of coats of polyurethane on there, you're gonna to wanna to put the hook in and you get this at any hardware store or at, you know, at Lowe's, Home Depot, things like that. And it screws into that hole. This is the one I've got polyurethane on ready and it's dried. So you screw that in. One thing I did on this one, the hole was a little bit off center. So what I did was simply, I bent the hook to the side so it gives you the illusion that it's centered. <laughs> Cover up mistakes in a lot of ways. Now, talking about mistakes, on the bottom I actually have two holes here where I should have had one. But to cover this up, you're just going to go to your hobby store and buy some of that good old-fashioned green felt or whatever color you want, and then use spray mount adhesive, spray that on the back of it, and then just stick it on there. No one will ever know there's a hole there. It's a great way to hide something like that. Then, get off there. <laughs> you want to grab yourself some tight bond wood glue. I think that's really good for this purpose because it's wood and we need glue. And we want this to hold for a long, long time. So we're gonna put that in like so. Take our tenon, put it in here, and you wanna twist it just to make sure you get good contact. But then as you're twisting it, make sure you get your grain oriented and lined up to where it looks good. See, that's really nice, that's the way we want it. So that is how you make a key holder and change holder. I like that project, I hope you did too. So until the next time, keep turning.